We have, in the past, covered the astonishing mega-metropolis that has been unearthed using ground-penetrating radar beneath a nearly impenetrable rainforest that now engulfs the area. A super-civilization that not only supports our posit of there once being a number of lost civilizations that have flourished and often seemingly met an untimely demise here on our planet, but has been estimated to have been home to more than 10 million sites such as Tikal, once believed to be independent separate clusters of past impressive and as yet unexplained block buildings, through the use of ground-penetrating radar, have been proven beyond doubt to have once been part of the same super-settlement that spanned nearly the entire rainforest that the site is now home to. Yet we have also covered the incredible ancient stone and earthworks that can be found dotting many areas of the Amazonian rainforest that again are indicative of a past super-civilization. Yet conveniently, since the discovery of Guatemala's super city, funding for such penetrative studies elsewhere of said areas has dried up. The question is why? Why are we witnessing an active attempt to conceal these ruins from the world? We feel the evidence to suggest so is now beginning to mount. However, where mainstream academia won't step, many others are fortunately willing to pick up the slack. And this particular area of interest is of no exception. And as usual, the investigative researchers have turned up some astonishing characteristics of the Amazonian rainforest, features which are indicative of another super-settlement possibly of a similar size to that of the ancient sites found within Guatemala. A group of scientists and researchers, after investigating the area, have put forward what has been pinned as the Amazonian Stonehenge. According to said researchers, they found evidence that a, quote, highly advanced ancient civilization once existed in Brazil. And although they have dated the ruins as having been built 500 years before the European colonization of the Americas began, we feel that the evidence to suggest that they were in reality far before this date will soon be realized, and that these people who once inhabited the Brazilian Amazon were possibly creating an impressive arrangement of immense towering granite blocks. As such, scientists today speculate that these massive stones were like so many other sites we have covered in the past, attributed as that of an ancient astronomical observatory. The structure consists of 27 blocks of granite, each up to 4 meters tall, standing upright in a circle measuring over 30 meters in diameter. In other words, possibly more than a thousand years ago, an ancient civilization of native peoples were flourishing in the area. According to the New York Times, Radiocarbon tests and site measurements during the winter solstice shed light on the ancient civilization's abilities that inhabited the Amazon. From this, new archaeologists have realized that the people who lived in the area developed a more advanced civilization than previously thought. Who built the Amazon Stonehenge? When did they build it? Is there a lost super-settlement hidden beneath the Amazonian rainforest as that of the Guatemala rainforest, we find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. All over the Earth, ancient structures can be found. Megaliths made of quarried stones many tons in weight. They are often found to have been perched atop one another with no mortar and seemingly little effort. Stonehenge, for example, underwent a restoration effort shortly after the Second World War, a project which consisted of several cranes, diggers, trucks, and lorries. One has to wonder, if one goes by currently accepted timelines of course, just how did such primitive people manage to build these amazing, enormous structures? Structures such as the very ancient gateway in Tonka, still consisting of three 40-ton lumps of coral, the granite stones within the king's chamber at Khufu weighing in at 80 tons, or the stone of the south at Baalbek in Lebanon, the largest officially recorded worked monolith on Earth, weighing in at a staggering 1,242 tons. There is, of course, other theories, and although to some, one in particular may not seem at all possible, it is far more of a viable option than currently attested archaeological views. 
Along with Stonehenge, another site we tend to unravel in the future, although a lot more modern, is Coral Castle, an oolite limestone structure that was built in Florida, and in particular, Edward Leedscallon, the man who built it. With the aid of a somewhat suspect black box, often spotted atop of his confusing array of multi-ton lifting wooden contraptions. This leads us on to our main topic of the video. It seems that Edward, like a few other known individuals throughout history, may have deciphered a piece of lost knowledge, information which allowed them to create rudimentary lifting devices with the ability of lifting stones many tons in weight effortlessly. In the small pockets of the world where advanced ancient cultures lived, prospered, and vanished into history, Places where their ancient ruins remain untouched by all but nature. Testimonies were found describing these exact technologies. Sites such as Puma Punka, Stonehenge, and in particular, Easter Island, where not only does there still exist accounts of the huge Moy statues floated along the coast by way of strange chants, the places in which the priests hid within the caves also still exist. These rituals in apparent frequency. Could this be a form of lost knowledge, or technology, which was responsible for the building of the many unexplained sites found around the world? Vibrational technology, capable of making any inorganic object, regardless of size, weightless? This would have allowed craft, previously impossible of flight, to float across the heavens, vindicating many historical accounts of Viminas. Additionally, the levitation of physical objects by tapping into their atomic resonance is currently being redeveloped. The University of Bristol in England has created a handheld device with an array of speakers that can levitate light materials with sound alone. The more time that passes, and the more technologically advanced we become, the more we begin to understand these amazing ancient structures. And although, for some, the realizations that these technological epiphanies induce, for example, accepting the possibility of a past, highly advanced ancient civilization, which ended with an equally as possible global cataclysm, could be seen as altering of a worldview to understand what's true is far from detrimental. Recently, an incredible story has been released by National Geographic. An enormous ancient metropolis found hidden beneath deep forests within Guatemala. Discovered using a combination of LIDAR mapping, drones, physical exploration, and other forms of radar, this lost city's disclosure, however, if given the publicity and understanding it deserves, brings with it some drastic, yet by some long-awaited realizations within academia, the archaeological community, the educational curriculum, and many, many authors and their so-called accurate literature. For this city's population has been estimated to have not just been thousands, but actually went far into the millions. A civilization, or rather, incredibly ancient and so far complex city, would have rivaled even the most heavily populated areas of Earth even to this day. Such incredible numbers of people at such a time within our ancient history, successfully co-inhabiting and surviving in such a space, demands incredible complexity and technological ability. A drastic relook at our currently taught understandings of history is undoubtedly required. Amazingly, this pre Columbian civilization, hidden for untold millennia beneath the dense rainforests of Guatemala, is estimated by some to have peaked a mere 1200 years ago. Yet it is entirely possible, and much more likely, that this lost city is far, far older than this. An advanced, complex city landscape which the most recent data suggests may have supported a population of up to 10 to 15 million people. This realized from new drone footage of the city, which spans an astonishing 2,100 square kilometers in size. The advanced infrastructure, which included advanced agricultural terracing, with elevated trade routes to prevent flooding in rainy seasons, not only has experts finally rethinking the dimensions and complexity of past empires, but it may be the linchpin needed in future realizations of a past civilization, a civilization which was far more enlightened than our current society. As such, upon their untimely demise, left little scars upon the earth. Little evidence of their existence, apart from their sophisticated structures, as such a lost city is discovered. 
As predicted, modern technology will ultimately bring an end to this worldwide suppression of what should be free-flowing information regarding what once was seen as controversial is now finally being seen as educational. And given that the newly announced Maya Megapolis is the result of only the first phase of Pakunam's LiDAR initiative, there are likely to be many more revelations about the mysterious people who built this massive urban network. Clearly an amazing discovery, one which could quite possibly be pre-Diluvian. We will keep you posted. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Over the last few years, more and more modern technologies have been utilized by individuals with access to them in an effort to not only expose the truth regarding the real history of man, but to discover the actual original size of these now lost civilizations' ancient ruins. Many sites have been laid to waste, not only by future settlements and tomb robbers, but by Mother Nature herself, many of these most impressive sites having endured eons of erosion after being mysteriously abandoned, exposed to the elements. Yet there exists a number of these sites which have been somewhat protected from these forces. Although vegetation can have a catastrophic effect, uprooting the megalithic foundations of these sites, yet the actual footprint of these structures, and indeed the overall size of these once lost settlements, can still be seen through modern penetrative radar with one of the most incredible found in the past few years. Undoubtedly, the mega metropolis hidden beneath the dense forests of Guatemala. Although some clearings dotted within this landscape have been spared, somehow avoiding the suffocation of trees, it has been discovered that these sites, long argued as separate sites of habitation, were, in reality, once part of the same gigantic city, one of unimaginable size and complexity, that was unquestionably home to not mere thousands, but was in fact a settlement that was home to more than 10 million. Yet although this reality is a compelling, supportive fact regarding our own beliefs, in regards to a far greater, now hidden, and widely ignored history of mankind, there are still features of this ancient site that is still attempted to be ignored, overlooked, and hopefully concealed from the majority of the world's population ultimately avoiding them questioning the true reality of what they have been taught, and the possible truth regarding our history, which these sites could provide to all those who gaze upon them. Although these particular megalithic blocks somehow stood on their heads, have been explored and exposed for nearly a hundred years, with many photographic expeditions having been made to these sites, it has now been proven that these megalithic blocks were not merely signposts made of stones in situ, but were clearly stones cut and once transported to their current location, and were actually strategically placed within one huge mega settlement. This fact is attempted to be stifled, avoiding individuals questioning how, if indeed they were transported and cut by our more recent ancestors, the Mayans, how they actually accomplished this feat when they clearly required now lost techniques and technologies, as although they were far more primitive, technologically speaking to the modern man, with us only accomplishing such abilities within the last century, all thanks to modern technology. This is clearly an identifying feature which exposes the true capabilities of the builders of this enormous city, and the fact that although academics would like to argue that it was merely a Mayan settlement, it possesses, like so many other astonishing sights on Earth, as yet unexplained enigmas, which not only fly in the face of this explanation for their origins, but actually suggest that they were merely re-inhabited by the Mayans, allowing archaeologists to point the finger at such a group due to their archaeological fingerprint having been left at the location sites which were in fact built by a now lost yet once highly capable ancient civilization that due to their immense age has now been lost to history, like so many of their ancient settlements, lost to the sands of time, with only the foundation of which now survive, thankfully exposed by modern technologies. Who were these ancient people? 
How or indeed why did they move and cut such enormous, enigmatic ancient megaliths within this enormous, now lost city? It is a place which we find highly compelling. Although the Olmec culture has been historically established as having flourished within the now dense jungles of Guatemala, there also exists many pre-Olmec ruins and artifacts that are still baffling researchers and historians alike. The Great Head of Guatemala being one of the most controversial of all. This enormous stone face indicates that not only the Olmecs or indeed native Hispanic race once called Guatemala home. A gigantic, masterfully carved stone head, with a face of fine features, thin lips, and large nose, once engulfed in millennia of vegetation, directed to the sky as if in eternal prayer. The discovery unsurprisingly attracted a lot of attention, yet just as predictably, due to its unquestioned controversy, quickly slipped into the pages of forgotten history. The initial discovery first emerged when Dr. Oscar Rafael Padilla Lara, a doctor of philosophy, lawyer, and notary, received a photograph of the head in 1987. Along with a vague description, it stated that the photograph was taken in the 1950s by the owner of the land, and that it was located, quote, 
somewhere in the jungles of Guatemala. The site was later established to have been 10 kilometers from a small village in the south of Guatemala. However, when Dr. Padilla managed to travel to the site, a short while after the discovery had been widely circulated throughout the country, he found that the site, along with the Caucasian featured stone face, had been obliterated. He stated, quote, It was destroyed by revolutionaries about 10 years ago. We had located the statue too late. It was used as target practice by rebels. This totally disfigured it. Sort of like the way the Sphinx in Egypt had its nose shot off by the Turks. Only worse. The eyes, nose, and mouth had been completely destroyed." End quote. Padilla was able to measure its height as having been between 4 and 6 meters. Although, predictably, the stone head had been destroyed due to its controversial nature, it may still shine light on who was flourishing in the jungles, far before any Olmec had ever stepped foot there. Additionally, and fortunately, the stone head is not the only pre-Olmec statue ever found. Named the Fat Boys, these other artifacts are another set of statues that, although not as racially controversial, possess characteristics even more so for the scientific world. These statues, retrieved and displayed, were discovered many years later to actually contain magnetic elements, which along with a number of anthropomorphic artworks from the same suspected civilization, have magnetic characteristics positioned at specific locations. On the Fat Boys, it is found at the navel, although the animal statues seemingly contain them around the faces. So, the question is obvious. How did an ancient culture, located so far back within history, not only know about this magnetism, but manage to create such artworks? Why did they create them? Were they attempting to tell their distant ancestors something? Regardless of the controversy surrounding their creators, they are undoubtedly highly compelling. Recently, an incredible story has been released by National Geographic. An enormous ancient metropolis found hidden beneath deep forests within Guatemala. Discovered using a combination of LIDAR mapping, drones, physical exploration, and other forms of radar, this lost city's disclosure, however, if given the publicity and understanding it deserves, brings with it some drastic, yet by some long-awaited realizations within academia, the archaeological community, the educational curriculum, and many, many authors and their so-called accurate literature. For this city's population has been estimated to have not just been thousands, but actually went far into the millions. A civilization, or rather, incredibly ancient and so far complex city, would have rivaled even the most heavily populated areas of Earth even to this day. Such incredible numbers of people at such a time within our ancient history, successfully co-inhabiting and surviving in such a space, demands incredible complexity and technological ability. A drastic relook at our currently taught understandings of history is undoubtedly required. Amazingly, this pre-Columbian civilization, hidden for untold millennia beneath the dense rainforests of Guatemala, is estimated by some to have peaked a mere 1,200 years ago. Yet it is entirely possible, and much more likely, that this lost city is far, far older than this. An advanced, complex city landscape, which the most recent data suggests may have supported a population of up to 10 to 15 million people. This realized from new drone footage of the city, which spans an astonishing 2,100 square kilometers in size. The advanced infrastructure, which included advanced agricultural terracing, with elevated trade routes to prevent flooding in rainy seasons, not only has experts finally rethinking the dimensions and complexity of past empires, but it may be the linchpin needed in future realizations of a past civilization, a civilization which was far more enlightened than our current society. As such, upon their untimely demise, left little scars upon the earth. Little evidence of their existence, apart from their sophisticated structures, as such a lost city is discovered. 
as predicted, modern technology will ultimately bring an end to this worldwide suppression of what should be free-flowing information regarding what once was seen as controversial is now finally being seen as educational. And given that the newly announced Maya Megapolis is the result of only the first phase of Pakunam's LiDAR initiative, there are likely to be many more revelations about the mysterious people who built this massive urban network. Clearly an amazing discovery one which could quite possibly be pre-Diluvian. We will keep you posted. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Over the last few years, more and more modern technologies have been utilized by individuals with access to them in an effort to not only expose the truth regarding the real history of man, but to discover the actual original size of these now lost civilizations' ancient ruins. Many sites have been laid to waste, not only by future settlements and tomb robbers, but by Mother Nature herself, many of these most impressive sites having endured eons of erosion after being mysteriously abandoned, exposed to the elements. Yet there exists a number of these sites, which have been somewhat protected from these forces. Although vegetation can have a catastrophic effect, uprooting the megalithic foundations of these sites. Yet the actual footprint of these structures, and indeed the overall size of these once lost settlements, can still be seen through modern penetrative radar, with one of the most incredible found in the past few years. Undoubtedly, the mega metropolis, hidden beneath the dense forests of Guatemala. Although some clearings dotted within this landscape have been spared, somehow avoiding the suffocation of trees, it has been discovered that these sites, long argued as separate sites of habitation, were, in reality, once part of the same gigantic city, one of unimaginable size and complexity that was unquestionably home to not mere thousands, but was in fact a settlement that was home to more than 10 million. Yet although this reality is a compelling, supportive fact regarding our own beliefs, in regards to a far greater, now hidden, and widely ignored history of mankind, there are still features of this ancient site that is still attempted to be ignored, overlooked, and hopefully concealed from the majority of the world's population, ultimately avoiding them questioning the true reality of what they have been taught and the possible truth regarding our history, which these sites could provide to all those who gaze upon them. Although these particular megalithic blocks somehow stood on their heads, have been explored and exposed for nearly a hundred years, with many photographic expeditions having been made to these sites, it has now been proven that these megalithic blocks were not merely signposts made of stones in situ but were clearly stones cut and once transported to their current location, and were actually strategically placed within one huge mega-settlement. This fact is attempted to be stifled, avoiding individuals questioning how, if indeed they were transported and cut by our more recent ancestors, the Mayans, how they actually accomplished this feat, when they clearly required now lost techniques and technologies as although they were far more primitive, technologically speaking to the modern man, with us only accomplishing such abilities within the last century, all thanks to modern technology. This is clearly an identifying feature, which exposes the true capabilities of the builders of this enormous city, and the fact that although academics would like to argue that it was merely a Mayan settlement, it possesses, like so many other astonishing sights on Earth, as yet unexplained enigmas, which not only fly in the face of this explanation for their origins, but actually suggest that they were merely re-inhabited by the Mayans, allowing archaeologists to point the finger at such a group due to their archaeological fingerprint having been left at the location, sites which were in fact built by a now lost yet once highly capable ancient civilization, that due to their immense age has now been lost to history, like so many of their ancient settlements, lost to the sands of time, with only the foundation of which now survive, thankfully exposed by modern technologies. Who were these ancient people? 
How or indeed why did they move and cut such enormous, enigmatic ancient megaliths within this enormous, now lost city? It is a place which we find highly compelling. There are many baffling, anomalous artist depictions that litter the megaliths all over the rainforest which now submerge the super-civilization or mega-metropolis which was once known as the Mayans. Pekal's tomb and the strange rocket designs we have shared before, location now unknown, the seal seemingly showing a craft of ancient high technology, indeed not to mention his choice to have a vivid green death mask. All mere coincidence? Even the stolen plaque, fortunately photographed before its mysterious theft, depicting a doomsday event. Volcanic eruptions in the background, with drowning natives, which accompanied a mass submersion found and subsequently stolen from Tikal. Mere coincidence? Yet with all these compelling pieces of evidence, all these artistic accounts, whether through cover-up or lack of discovery and accurate artistically created depiction. Of this event of a peaceful trade via ancient alien contact, what the argument needed to become unarguable may have just been discovered deep in the Mayan rainforests. Accurate depictions created in brittle yet precious jade tablets of considerable proportions, artistic interpretations of these events, and the giving of gifts actually once occurring. A statement released by Julia Levy, the Minister of Tourism for the Mexican state of Campache, Luis Augusto Garcia Rosado, the highest-ranking government official to go on record confirming the discovery of this possible extraterrestrial life, said, quote, Guatemala, like Mexico, home to the ancient yet advanced Mayan civilization, has also kept certain provocative archaeological discoveries classified and now believes that it is time to bring forth this information. Rosado spoke of contact, quote, between the Mayans and extraterrestrials, supported by translations of certain codices which the government has kept secure in underground vaults for some time. In a telephone conversation with the rap, he also spoke of, quote, landing pads in the jungle that are 3,000 years old, end quote. 